So just a quick reminder, I think it's always nice to know is the old signs that you've been told, taught and emphasized really could not explain things on why you were still hurting or why it was still existing, even after with medical treatment. And, um, you know, so the old signs really get stuck on, um, it cannot explain why the symptoms change, the locations. And it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just means that it's not looking at the, um, the whole picture. And very often old signs thinks that if you fix something, cut something up, resect something, add something, remove something, it should get better. But we know that's not true. Next slide, please. And so, but the new science we have said that we have come to understand that it's the nervous system, it's the brain and the body. So the brain really takes in all this information and makes an assessment based on what the body sends up to the brain and the brain sends back down to the body. And we, know, we now know that a lot of our pain based on brain science studies, that it's basically a pattern, a habit pattern. Uh, and of what of protection and of what in service of your survival. So pain, whenever you still, if you're struggling with pain still and it waxes and wane, it's just a simple way of saying is the brain says, hey, I sense danger, how can I protect you? And this is basically a built-in process. But what we've taught you guys is that this is called learned neural pathway or a habit. And the goal there again is to protect you in service of your survival. Excellent. And so a couple of things that we've, uh, we kind of want to do a quick summary here is that one of the things to getting into pain recovery or reversing this condition to some degree, and often it's in three levels, it completely goes away, it reduces 50%, or sometimes it waxes and wanes, but it's no longer dominant because of a few things. Because one, you've shifted your belief um, and this is really key because it's hard. When you feel the symptoms still, we go back to our old habits that, oh, this is what I was told it could be. It's possible, but there might be other things going on. So um, to shift this, it requires you to really, really, really have this belief. And you cannot quite intellectualize this. You actually have to do the exercises. You actually have to kind of be immersed in it. Uh, there's no tricking here. So um, the belief is very important. So how you relate to the pain or your difficult thoughts and emotions are really crucial, which leads me to the second thing is if you continue to be afraid and it's very normal to be afraid, you're like, oh my gosh, it's here. And as long as you catch yourself, that's good. However, when you over identify with your thoughts, emotions, and even your physical pain, this is when it starts to perpetuate. And it's very difficult. That's why today we're gonna to kind of get into a very specific intervention that needs to be used, whether you're meditating, whether you're feeling the pain or whether you're upset about something. But not being afraid of the pain is one of the first signs of success. You will feel what you feel, but you will no longer let it push you around in the sense where it just kind of makes you feel as if it's never gonna get better. The third thing is this is we have enough science now that's showing that unexpressed emotions will basically be impressed in your body. This goes with gut pain. This goes with leg pain, knee pain, any kind of pain, fibromyalgia, headaches, migraines. Why? Because when we don't express the truth, our nervous system feels like we have to kind of protect ourselves. So any unexpressed emotions can actually weaken your nervous system, which then weakens your immune system, which then you feel it in your body parts. And so the other thing to this is, believe it or not, um, when I first did this 18 years ago, I was told to tell people to get into fun things and do fun things, but we really didn't have a whole lot of science. Now we have, a, now we have science. We know that when you actually play and laugh at least once a day, you know, kind of like Joy's son was being goofy and funny. And it was nice to just laugh and go like, yep. And then Joy's like, yep, here's the stalker of the day. And we were just teasing him and Joy. And that when you play and laugh like that and not take life so seriously more days than not, you actually shift your nervous system. You actually send messages of safety. We have good signs now. It lowers your cortisol level, increases your immune system, and your body actually feels more relaxed. So the message here is this, is if you're not playing, doing fun hobbies, connecting with fun and safe people, 
if you're not um, watching funny videos or thinking of funny memories, um, that will be more difficult to get better. So these four things are really crucial in having part of your lifestyle, your belief, when the pain shows up higher than usual, you go like, yep, you're trying to protect me. I get that. Um, have I expressed my emotions? Is that why maybe? And so that might be something to look at again. Uh, and on, on a side note, if you've been still struggling with your emotions, it is important that you see a therapist and process that. And it's also important to see what's kind of going on in your life for that matter. But with that said, I really want to emphasize that the fun stuff is often neglected. So I hope that you will do that. Uh, keep that in mind.